Hi, this is Andy, that guy who made sure that you had a big, fat, juicy Thanksgiving turkey sitting on your table today because of the eight for nine Sunday and then the four for five Monday that we had in the NFL last week. I hope you were able to reap rewards for that. I hope your family is reaping the rewards of a solid week 11. It came at the perfect time. You need a little extra money because you needed to bring things to that person. You need to get that bottle of wine for Friendsgiving. Well, that happened last Sunday and Monday. We're going to look to continue that. I'm going to do the best I can for you on this Thanksgiving Thursday. We got three games, and here we go. What are we going to start with? You know what we're starting with. One of the best promotions you'll ever get on this channel, BetMGM. If you bet $10 on a money line in the World Cup, any game, you bet $10, any team, if a goal is scored by anybody in the World Cup, you're going to get credited with $200. It's a great offer from them. I'm simply calling it the bet $10. You're just getting $200. That's the bottom line. Promotion from BetMGM. Check the specifics in the description of this video. You have to be a first-time user. I think there's geographical restri restrictions. Just make sure you understand what those are. And then click the link that you see below, which will take you there on Thanksgiving morning. We're going to be looking at a 12:30 game. Should I keep going? It's gonna be the Bills versus the Lions. We almost had a double digit favorite. You know my policy on this channel. If we reach double digits, we're taking the underdog. We're not even thinking about it. It's served us very well this year. If you've done that for every double digit favorite since the beginning of time, bet the underdog, you're a winner more than you're a loser. But there's a little tease to what's ahead. In this game, I see a rather high over under and I'm inclined to take the under. One thing that I like seeing is that not everybody's on it, but something else that you clearly saw throughout that last Buffalo game is because Josh Allen was struggling in the red zone the previous couple games. They weren't winging it all over that field. Josh Allen threw for one touchdown. They clearly were running and running and taking more decisions out of his hands. It was clear as day to see. They kept running the ball, and then once they had a lead, they were even using James Cook a ton, which is going to kind of foreshadow one of our props, but you got the Bills who are running more, trying to take more pressure off of Allen, and then on the other side, you have a Lions team that, yeah, they've been able to score points, but this is a kind of different beast you're talking about here. The Bills have consistently been one of the best defenses in the whole league. So you give me one of the best defenses versus Jared Goff and a limited selection of stars. Oh, you have St. Brown, Swift out of the backfield, but you know, Hawkinson is gone. We'll be seeing him later in our picks. I like the under in this game. It's a high total. I don't think they're going to be winging it all over the field. And my recent memory tells me that those early games, they rarely are these high scoring affairs. Is it another 12-30? No, I'm going to take the under on this Bills-Lions game. Then moving on to the next game, we got the Giants versus the Cowboys. You want to know what I'm taking? You know what I'm taking because I already foreshadowed. I'm actually going to take the... New York Giants plus 10 points. That's the rule. It's just too many points. I feel like we saw Dallas throw an absolute beating, and then we saw the Giants take a beating you know, at home at the hands of the Lions, and people are starting to think that they're the frauds, that they probably are. However, it's that perfect scenario. Everybody loving the Cowboys, everybody thinking the Giants are a disgrace. I bet against the Giants a couple times. Did it with the Seahawks. I got a decent read on them. This is a good spot for them to cover that spread so much to the point. Like, my pick is going to be plus 10 for the Giants, but I'm willing to get... You ready for this? I'm going to give them seven points. I'm going to take the alternate line as well, just for a small amount, New York Giants plus three and a half. No, no, not the money line. I'm not going to give them the full 10. I'm going to give them about a touchdown back, roughly a touchdown back. I'm going to take the Giants also at plus three and a half for a great price. And then as far as props go in that game, Oh, one thing that I wanted to mention in the last game, I haven't seen it listed yet. The same way that I instructed you guys, I don't care what the deal is. Once uh, once they list the line, find the rushing total for Eli Mitchell and take the over on that. I said that because I knew as soon as they had a comfortable lead, they were going to want to limit McCaffrey's usage. Same type of thing that you saw in the Buffalo game. As soon as they had the game in control, a ton of James Cook, they're going to keep try to keep it out of Josh Allen's hand, keep him healthy, try to limit those turnovers so he stays mentally sharp. 
start and second half you're going to see a ton of james cook so i haven't seen what the totals listed at yet i couldn't find it earlier when i checked but make sure you find that over on james cook rushing yards and then let everybody know in the comments where they can find it sometimes they hide the good ones they hide the good ones on me they hit elijah mitchell now they're trying to hide this one commenters help each other out or you can be miserable and keep it for yourself but going back to that giants game i'm looking at dalton schultz on the cowboy side they have his uh, over under yardage total listed in the high 30s if ever since he's came back we know the rapport that he has with Dak we saw it all last year this total 38 the only time he missed it was last week look at the previous weeks before that he's been get consistently topping 40 yards he did it his first three weeks back just a single down week and as a 10 point favorite I like them to throw it enough where he's going to get over 30. Just give me the over, I believe it's 38 and a half receiving yards for Dalton Schultz. Speaking of adjusted lines, I want to take the Daniel Jones over one and a half touchdowns, but they actually have it listed at a half for an absurd price. So I'm actually going to take, if you want, you can, you can pair the Daniel Jones throw for one touchdown with the Giants plus 10 but I would prefer finding the Daniel Jones you know you could obviously do this in same game parlays I think he's gonna have to throw one and a half touchdowns when you're 10 point underdogs that really kind of lends itself to a passing game script and he's gonna have to throw if they're gonna keep it in the game so if you're gonna be right with the plus 10 I feel like he's gonna have to throw more than one touchdown so how about that for a little same game parlay Daniel Jones and I know you can do this plus uh, one and a half touchdowns and then Giants plus 10 points not bad huh and then I believe that was all I had for props on that one and then looking at the late game we got the Vikings and they're hosting the Patriots now here's one I'm going to go over. I get it. You see two teams who struggled to score points last week. So people see, oh, okay, you have New England. My God, they couldn't score anything. What did they get? One field goal, a couple missed field goals. They needed a punt return touchdown. Then you got the Vikings who got blown out. That's a classic. Everybody is going to get mesmerized by what they saw last week and bet on that like it's going to double up. I'm taking the over on the Minnesota Vikings. And for the game, I don't... I'm... I'm tempted to take the Vikings minus two and a half. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I smell cheese. I see a stake in the woods, and I'm not letting the tribesmen throw a spear at me. So while I'm tempted to take it, I'm staying away. Instead, I'm going to look at the props. TJ Hawkinson's had about nine targets in every single one of these games. I'm going to take the over on TJ Hawkinson, one of the weapons that isn't going to be in that first game, which is why I took an under in that first one. Also in that game, I'm going to be looking at the over on receptions for Jacoby Myers. This is, you know, I've been looking at his yardage typically the last couple of weeks, but now because they've been really struggling to move the ball in chunks earlier in the year, he was, he was getting the receptions and the yardage, but he still is getting the targets and the looks, especially short term. So I actually feel most comfortable taking the over four and a half receptions for Jacoby Myers. That's what I got for you on this Thanksgiving Thursday. If there's a decent amount in there, if there's anything else, maybe I'll throw it on my social media. Make sure you're following me on there. That's where I, I list things that I think about last minutes, like if I find the James Cook or if I could find that Eli Mitchell one from last week. So follow me on social media. It's at Andy Francis on all platforms. Follow the guys on Odd Shopper here for more fantastic content. No, it's not fantastic. It's stochastic. All right, I'll be back with you guys Sunday for week 12. Take it easy. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. And when you eat 9,000 calories, don't blame it on the tryptophan. Don't be one of those people who goes, oh, no, no, I need to relax. I think the tryptophan's kicking in. You had 15 turkey sandwiches in the last couple of weeks. You never bring up tryptophan on February 3rd. I'll see you next time.